Hello pack, my name is Valkor and welcome to Dauntless. Now today we're going to be talking about the Nas Saga. This is kind of like an advanced guide on how to take down the Nas Saga, what you need to look for in order to have a successful hunt against the Nas Saga, even if you're by yourself. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and make sure to go and check out the links in the description where you can find our Twitter, our Discord channel. And above all guys, if you're not part of the Wolfpack, hit that subscribe button. It will smash you, slap you, and even blast you lightning from the sky. I give you... The Nasag. So the Nasaga has a couple of moveset to fight you in his hunt, and one of them is the kind of like a kind of like a, the way he traverses the map. He kind of like lo launches himself as a torpedo, and the only way that you can actually avoid this is to get out of the way and be close to him. Because if you're far away, it's a little harder to avoid because he's gonna be maneuvering towards you. And the way that you're gonna know that he's about to do this move is that you're gonna notice that the Nasaga will reposition himself to kind of like face you, and after he does that, he will launch himself of up front just sliding through the ground now he will do this uh two times at the same time he will probably just go past you the first time and then after he goes to his destination he will go ahead and turn around and do the same thing again now the only way to avoid this is to actually be close to him and make sure that you can dodge out of the way or dodge through the attack one of the cool things about the nasaga is that he is very very easy to read the nasaga is actually one of the monsters that has the the kind of like the bigger tails and you can actually know what the Nasaga is about to do uh, within a couple of seconds before he does it. Uh, now you can see right here he's gonna do kind of like a sla slap scratch attack and before he does that he will kind of like stand in his back two legs and kind of like lunge forward and hit you or try to hit you with his claws. And this is the perfect opportunity to actually just go ahead and dodge right through it or to the side. The Nasaga also has a back backhand swipe, which is pretty easy to avoid. Again, he has a pretty, pretty easy tell to read. He will basically just kind of like swing his arm to one of the sides, and then he's going to actually try to hit you with a wide horizontal backhand slap. And it's pretty easy to avoid. All you gotta do is get away from the distance or just go to his tail, and you will basically just be out of the range of the movement. Another one of the Nasaga attack consists on actually tackling you with his body and the way you can tell he's about to do this, he will actually look to one of his sides and he will kind of like get momentum and slide his shoulder across the ground. When you see the Nasaga that actually pulls his hand out of the ground and he's about to launch forward, that's your moment to actually get out of the way or roll through it if you're using a weapon that actually rolls. Another one of the Nasaga attacks revolves around the tail swipe. Now this tail swipe is a little weird looking because it's not actually just a tail swipe. He will actually do a kind of like a half body tail swipe from the back part of his of his body. And he will basically, the, the way that you're going to know that he's going to do a tail swipe is that you're going to notice the tail will curl up with his body and then he will actually launch his back half around the ground and swiping around the area. And also, one of the most annoying movements that the Nasaga has is kind of like a body slam. Now, this body slam is a little hard to read because he doesn't really give any tails as he's about to do it. He just kind of like stands there and then jump. And as soon as you see that he jumps, because he doesn't even get impulse. So as soon as he's out of the air, it's probably already too late to get out of the way unless you're using a roll attack and you can actually roll out of the way. But with the chain blades, it's all about positioning and you'll have to actually be kind of a way of the hitbox before he's off the ground. Now to get to the bread and butter of this fight, the Nasaga also have what we're calling quail turrets. I'm not sure if that's the official name, but basically the Nasaga will stand in place, he will kind of do like a sumo stance with his front legs, and he will start shooting quills up in the air. He will shoot up to four quills, and these quills will stay into the ground, and once they're in the ground, they're gonna start charging up and throw lightning bolts at you. Now. These lightning bolts are not really that difficult to avoid or to return with the chain blades, but they are pretty annoying. And th in this portion of the fight, I would suggest switching your priority from the Nasaga to the actual spikes because you could get overwhelmed by the time four spikes are gonna shoot, depending on the positioning that they are in. Now, there are a couple of exceptions to this. Uh, the Nasaga might do this attack right before he's knocked down. And what I would suggest is to position yourself that the Nasaga is between you and the quills so that whenever you the quills shoot energy energy bolts at you then you can actually return them back or just get out of the way. And what's gonna help you get this fight done reliably is the ability to actually take advantage of one of the simple mechanics that the Nasaga has. 
Then I said I will stand in ground and kind of like roar and throw out a couple of quills up into the air. Now this is a different kind of attack. This one revolves of setting up a quill power generator turret type thing that is going to have four quills, a lightning bolt in the middle, and kind of like a power shield. Now this power shield is actually protecting this quill so you won't be able to destroy them. However, as soon as the Nasaga does this attack, I would suggest getting out of the way because he will kind of like charge up and call down lightning strikes. I'm, I'm calling it lightning strikes because it's, it feels like lightning is falling from the sky, hitting the ground from the Nasaga to the actual shield core, whatever that turret core is. And this is actually going to overcharge the shield, triggering a lightning bolt. It's kind of like a little big, it's a bigger lightning bolt than the previous ones. And you can actually return this one to the power core, which is going to destroy the shield. Now, once the shield is destroyed, this is your opportunity to actually just lay down damage in the squills, destroy the squills, and take advantage of the opportunity that is going to be created. The opportunity is that once the squills are destroyed, then a saga is actually going to be knocked down into the ground, it's going to lose his charge up power, and you're going to be able to actually deal a lot of damage. This is pretty much the most important mechanic in the fight. Then Asaga has a smash attack that he can either perform with his left or right arm and you have to be very careful because he can do a lot of damage. Also it's gonna apply to you the debuff of electricity which we're gonna cover in a little bit but basically the, the attack you will notice that he will start lifting his leg up either the front the left or the right leg and then he's gonna smash the ground. Now as soon as you see that his arms being lifted up you have to get out of the way. You have to either dash back, roll back or dodge through it because the explosion has quite a bit of range and it can be pretty devastating. And those are pretty much all the attacks that Asaga is able to perform in a fight. However, there's a couple more things that I want to cover and that is the uh, electricity debuff. Now, the electricity debuff is not really a bad debuff in itself. Uh, all it does is that you're not allowed to actually use any items when you're electrocuted. Which could be a little bit dangerous because if you're actually low on health and you actually have this debuff, it will prevent you from healing through any items or use any items for that matter. So I would suggest if you actually have this debuff and you're in a kind of like dangerous situation, I would suggest cheating your weapon away and kind of like maneuver around until the debuff is out so that you can actually get health back up. Another cool tip for this fight is that you can actually use the uh, kind of like the this power core to prevent the Nasaga from actually hitting you because he will be stuck in the other side of the quills. Now you could you need to be a little bit careful because I'm not sure if this is intended. However, the some of the attacks can actually go through, which is kind of like the attacks that are gonna go around, like the tail swipe specifically can actually still damage you even if you're on the other side of the quills. And I'm not sure why this happens, but any of the other attacks will actually get stopped before the quills and actually not gonna be able to hit you. All you gotta do is position yourself correctly that the all these quills are actually between you and the Nasaga and pay attention to what he's doing. If he's about to do a, a, a tail swipe, just get out of the way and then go back in. But if he's about to do a tackle or a, another another one of the attacks, you can actually just stay in place and it will probably not do any damage to you because it's not gonna hit you. And as far as the weapon goes, I've actually soloed in a saga with the chain blades, the sword, and the hammer. I still can't really get the axe into the axe. I'm not really good with the axe. However, I will say that the best weapon to actually go against the Nasaga either solo or with people is to actually use the chain blades. Just because of the simple fact that you need to return orbs to the actual shield to make sure to take advantage of that and you know you're able to actually have a lot of movement, you can cover a lot of ground with the new dodge attack and the pulling in into the quills. I think the chain blades is actually the best weapon to fight against the Nasaga. As far as the element, I'm using fire element most of the time because the fire dog is pretty powerful and I don't think the actual uh, elements will play that much a bigger, a bigger role. I've had tried using weapons of the same attack power with other elements and it takes a little bit longer for me to actually kill the Nasaga. So this is why I prefer to use fire weapon against him at the moment. Uh, but this is not to say that this won't change. Remember that this is all closed beta and it could all change when the game releases. So 
But anyways, I think I covered everything I wanted to cover about the fight against the Nasaga in Solo and hopefully this video has been very informative for you guys and you guys can actually start soloing the Nasaga, farming the armor because I really think the armor has some of the best aspects in the game. And let me know what do you think in the comment section down below. Do you think the chain blades are the best weapon to fight against the Nasaga? Did you learn anything from this video? Just those are the things that I'm interested in seeing because if you guys enjoy this, I might do more. I just wanted to do the Nasaga one because I know the Nasaga is one of the kind of like go to monsters and get the armor for and I think it's very very important that you guys do so because it will help you greatly whenever you're fighting the Shroud and Rare Security. And that's what I'm gonna end today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it a lot. I've had a lot of fun making this video. It took me a while. I actually had to do a couple edits, a couple of runs on this because I, I wanted to make the best possible and the clearest video possible for you guys to actually understand. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. So I actually want to have, this is something I've never done before, but I actually want to have a like gold for this video. I wanna have at least 10 likes in this video. So if you guys are able to put a like in this video, let me know if you like, it will let me know if that you like this video and it will let me know like kind of like a uh, it, that this is content that is actually valuable to you guys so anyways remember to check out the links in the description for the giveaway the giveaway is only four days away so hopefully you guys are participating on it i'm a, i can't wait till i actually give that key away and as always guys i've been valcor and i'll see you next time